The narrative starts with Jen in her apartment, as she calls out to her daughter Isabel, telling her to come down for breakfast so they won't be late for Isabel's elementary school photos. Isabel sighs, but Jen scolds her gently. Leaning on the table, Jen gazes at her family photo, her eyes lingering on her late husband's face. A pang of sadness washes over her, but she shakes it off as she hears Isabel's footsteps on the stairs. Isabel enters the room, and Jen asks if she has packed up all she needs. Isabel nods enthusiastically. In the rush of morning, Marissa calls out to her daughter Lucy, telling her to hurry up and get ready for her school photo. She's also chatting with her husband, trying to juggle multiple tasks at once. Outside the house, Marissa speaks on the phone about how busy she is and promises to call the person back at 9 a.m. After she drops Lucy off at school and gets to the office, she also mentioned that she has a meeting with the PTO later in the day. Lucy is surprised to hear that her mother will be attending the PTO meeting, as she thought her father would be the one to do it. Marissa explains that since this is Lucy's last year in elementary school, she wants to be a part of every moment. Marissa tells Lucy to give her best smile for the pictures, and Lucy obliges, posing with enthusiasm and showing off her pearly whites. Her happiness is evident in every photo, and Marissa can't help but smile herself. As Kelly goes live on social media, her family is gathered around her. She calls out to her daughter Jordan and asks if she's ready for her annual back-to-school selfie. Kelly's husband, Kevin, looks at her with a tired expression, asking if she really has to film everything that happens in their lives. She replies that she only documents the important moments, things that her fellow moms might find useful. Jordan, curious, asks her mother what BMF stands for. Kelly explains that it means best mom friend. In the background, Kelly's husband, Kevin, watches the exchange with a fond smile on his face. Kelly signs off, blowing kisses to her viewers and wishing them well. She sets down her phone and joins her family for the rest of the morning. The next scene opens with Jen and Isabel stepping out of their home. Jen asks Isabel if she's ready for the day ahead. Isabel gives a sly grin and rolls her eyes. Jen tells her to pose for a couple of photos, a nice smiley one for her grandparents and a silly and fun one for just them. Isabel's expression falls, and she replies that the tradition is special to them back at their old house, with her dad. Jen's expression softens as she tells her daughter it's a tradition that they can keep, no matter where they are cause they are exactly where her dad wants them to be. Isabel worries that people won't like her, and her mom reassures her, saying she's a cool kid and that everyone will love her. Jen smiles, encouraging Isabel to pose for the camera. Isabel reminds her mom that she's still in her pajamas, but Jen waves it away, saying no one will notice since she won't be leaving the car. On the school grounds, Jen and Isabel hug goodbye. Isabel gets out of the car, forgetting her lunch pack in the backseat. Jen turns to look and sees the forgotten lunch pack. She calls out to Isabel, but it's too late, she's already gone. With a sigh, Jen gets out of the car and hurries to catch up to Isabel, lunch pack still in hand. As Jen gets out of the car, a few impatient drivers honk their horns, annoyed by her blocking the way. Jen apologizes and hurries back to her car to repark. Meanwhile, Marissa is seen on the phone with her AirPods, oblivious to Jen rushing behind her to catch up. After finally making it to the front door, Jen sees that it's locked. She tries to get the receptionist's attention, but the receptionist has headphones in and doesn't hear her. Jen rings the bell and calls out, but the receptionist doesn't notice her. A teacher named Dan walks by, but he doesn't notice Jen is stuck outside. She knocks on the door, explaining about her daughter's lunch pack. Dan finally notices Jen and goes over to help. He taps the receptionist on the shoulder and she finally opens the door, but it closes again before Jen can get through. She stands there in frustration, not sure what to do. Jen still struggles with the door when Dan comes to her rescue, opening it for her. He points to the other door and she walks towards him, thanking him. He compliments her blue pajamas and she sheepishly tells him she didn't realize she'd have to get out of the car. Dan tells her not to worry about it, that he's seen worse. Jen laughs and says she has to get in to give Isabel her lunch pack. Dan points to a table where the lunches are stored and says she doesn't need to come in after all. Jen looks confused and starts to stammer, trying to explain that she's new to the school and doesn't know how things work. Dan and Jen chat while standing by the door, but their conversation is cut short when the door suddenly closes behind them. They turn to say goodbye to each other. As Jen steps out of the door, she spots Marissa and waves to her. Marissa comes over and starts to tell Jen about the PTO meeting. Jen seems unsure if she should follow Marissa or not, and starts fidgeting with her hands. Marissa notices Jen's uncertainty and asks her if it's because she's not dressed appropriately. Jen nods sheepishly, embarrassed that she's only wearing her pajamas. Marissa reassures Jen that everyone has been in that situation before, and no one would mind if she came to the meeting as she is. Jen laughs, feeling a little more confident, and says she'll come along after all. Marissa smiles, happy to have made Jen feel more at ease, and they both head towards the PTO meeting together. As Jen and Marissa walk into the planning committee meeting, 
Jen's pajamas attract the attention of another mom named Susan. Susan, showing a clipboard tells her to sign. Jen signs her name and finds a seat. Marissa, meanwhile, looks over the schedule for the upcoming school events when she sees that the school is planning a field day, she groans. Kelly tries to convince Marissa to sign up for the field day committee, telling her that Lucy would be thrilled to have her mom involved. Marissa sighs deeply, but finally relents, deciding that the event could be fun after all. She signs up for the committee and Kelly thanks her. Kelly takes the list of volunteers to Susan who is thrilled to see so many parents willing to help out with the various events. They both express their excitement about the upcoming year and discuss ideas for new events. As Susan looks over the list of volunteers, her excitement turns to disappointment when she sees that only two people have signed up for the field day committee. Marissa and Jen look at each other and nod, knowing that their names are the only ones on the list. Kelly tells them that they need someone with experience in planning school events. She asks Marissa if her husband, Tim, will be available to help. Marissa shakes her head saying he isn't. Jen is curious and asks Marissa about who Tim is, and Marissa explains that Tim is her husband. With a mischievous grin, Susan suggests that Kelly join Jen and Marissa in the field day planning. Since Kelly is already on the committee, she should pitch in, too. Kelly's expression changes from happy to shocked. She tells Susan that she can't do it since she's already in charge of the trunk or treat event. But Susan is persistent, and eventually, Kelly agrees to help out with the field day planning. Jen, Marissa, and Kelly walk together, chatting and getting to know each other better. Jen asks Marissa and Kelly why field day is such a difficult event to plan. Marissa and Kelly shake their heads, recalling a memory of children crawling in mud and getting hurt. Kelly assures them that this year will be different as she's going to make sure the event is safe and fun for everyone involved. Jen and Marissa are skeptical, but they're willing to give Kelly a chance to prove herself. Back at home, Isabel's grandma asks her if she's made any new friends at school, and Isabel mentions her new friend, Jordan. Jen interrupts, saying that Isabel hadn't mentioned her before. Isabel explained that she didn't tell Jen because her grandma had offered to pay for information. Jen's mom then asks Isabel for the names of the PTO moms that Jen had met. Isabel mentions Kelly and Marissa, and Jen's mom suggests inviting them over for brunch. But Jen hesitates, not sure if they're her type of friends. As Marissa finishes her call, she sees Jen and Kelly waiting for her, eager to start planning. Kelly tells Marissa that it's hard to focus when she's on the phone. Marissa also remarks that she had seen Kelly recording a video just minutes earlier. Kelly defends herself, saying that it was for her followers on social media as she's trying to build an online presence as a mom blogger. Kelly asks Jen to follow her on social media, giving her the handle, and Jen enters it into her phone. Kelly lists the topics she covers on her social media, parenting, motherhood, DIY projects, and recipes. Marissa interjects, mentioning that she saw one of Kelly's posts about feeling sorry for kids whose moms work full-time. Kelly's face falls as she realizes she's been caught talking behind someone's back. Kelly asks Jen what she does for a living and where Jen's husband is. Jen tells them that her husband is late and that both Marissa and Kelly comfort her. Jen soon scrolls through Kelly's social media and sees the pajama pants she wore on the first day she dropped her daughter off at school. Marissa laughs at this and Kelly defends herself, stammering and changing the topic back to their plans for the school's field day. Marissa rolls her eyes with a smile on her face, and Jen says goodbye to them. As Jen enters the school's basketball storage room, she runs into Dan once again. He walks in, thinking that it's a student in the storage room, but is surprised to see Jen. He teases her by calling her breakfast pants, which makes her roll her eyes. Jen tells him to stop calling her that, and Dan agrees, laughing. Jen tries to pick up the net of basketballs, but it falls open, scattering balls all over the floor. She picks up one of the balls and throws it into the net, making a perfect shot. Dan is impressed and asks Jen if she's played basketball before. Jen tells him that she used to play in high school, but had to stop because of an injury. Dan remains impressed that Jen was able to make a perfect shot despite her injury. They chat for a little while longer, and Jen is about to leave when Dan takes a shot and makes a perfect basket. Jen looks at him in admiration, smiling with her eyes shining like the morning sun. Dan seems pleased with himself, and Jen can't help but laugh at his enthusiasm. She tells him he's quite the basketball player which makes Dan shrug modestly, but Jen can tell he's secretly pleased with himself. It's a cold day, and Kelly, Marissa, and Jen are all dressed in warm jackets and headbands. They're taking the kids to go bungee jumping, and Jen tells Kelly that she hopes Kelly knows they can't bring all the kids here for field day. Kelly tells her not to worry because the owner of the mountain is giving them a discount if they post about it on social media. She says she'll post it to her 10,000 followers, and asks Jen if she'd be willing to help design her website, knowing that Jen is into web design. Jen agrees and starts brainstorming ideas for the website, while Marissa smiles and laughs at their enthusiasm. 
As they continue to chat about their plans for field day, the kids start to get restless. Jen suggests they start bungee jumping, so the kids can burn off some energy. Everyone agrees and they head over to the jumping area. At the mountain, Jen is sitting alone, looking a bit lost in thought. Dan approaches her with his niece, Piper, and asks if she's okay. Jen tells him she's fine, and he suggests that Piper go play. Jen compliments Piper's name and asks if she's Dan's daughter which makes Dan clarify that Piper is his niece. He notices that Jen hasn't joined the bungee jumping and asks her why. She explains that it's not a fear of heights, but rather, a fear of leaving her daughter alone in the world. She says that sometimes, she has to avoid doing things she enjoys to make sure her daughter is taken care of. Just then, Isabel comes running up to Jen, asking for a drink of water. Jen gets up and grabs her a bottle of water. Jen and Dan are enjoying their conversation when they notice a cider truck nearby. They decide to get some cups and enjoy a refreshing drink. As they're talking, Jen and Dan find themselves drawn to each other, their eyes meeting with smiles playing on their lips. They begin to feel a connection like they've found someone who understands them. But their moment is interrupted when Marissa and Kelly approach, joking about Jen flirting with Dan. Jen insists that's not what's happening, but they just laugh at her, teasing her about having a crush. Jen hurries into her home to get started on some work, but her mom is already there, asking why Jen hasn't been unpacking, so Jen explains that she's been busy with PTO and work. Her mom gives her a knowing look, saying that Jen is just making excuses to avoid dealing with the emotional pain of moving. At that moment, Isabel walks in, asking Jen to go to the fall festival with her. Jen initially says no, but after a moment's thought, she changes her mind. Isabel wraps her arms around her mom in a big hug. In the next scene, we see Marissa in her apartment, with her husband Tim. Tim tells Marissa that she's always on her phone, working on stuff. But Marissa promises him that she'll go to the fall fair without her phone or laptop, to avoid any distractions. Tim playfully points out that she's still wearing her smartwatch, and Marissa laughs as she takes it off too. At the fall fair, Jen, Marissa, and Kelly are enjoying themselves when Kelly excuses herself to get more volunteers for the field day event. Marissa introduces her husband, Tim, to Jen and Kevin. They all get along well, and the conversation is light and fun. Kelly returns, looking discouraged, and Marissa asks what's wrong. Kelly tells her that no one wants to volunteer, and she's not sure what to do. Marissa reminds her that it's her responsibility as the head of the committee to find a solution. This pisses Kelly off as she goes into the corn maze. Marissa and Jen venture into the corn maze, looking for Kelly. They're enjoying the challenge of finding their way through the maze until suddenly they realize they're lost. Jen sees Dan nearby, and she can tell he's trying to act like he's not lost too. Suddenly, Marissa is nowhere to be found. Jen searches for her, but Marissa is nowhere in sight. After a while, Jen sees Marissa on a phone, and Marissa explains that she borrowed a stranger's phone because she had promised him and Lucy that she would not work today. Jen tells Marissa that she's lucky to have Tim by her side, and Marissa agrees, saying she doesn't know what she'd do without him. Jen pauses, and Marissa apologizes for making that remark, realizing it must be hard for Jen to hear, given her situation. Jen assures Marissa that it's okay, and she's not upset by what Marissa said. Just then, Kelly walks up to them, her eyes slightly red and teary. She overhears their conversation, and Kelly and Marissa try to comfort Jen. Jen goes to find Dan, who is still lost in the maze, and they finally make their way out together. Kelly sees Susan, and she runs over to hug her, feeling a little less anxious. Jen calls out to Susan, asking if she could provide more volunteers for field day. Susan makes excuses, but Jen is determined to convince her by telling Susan to give them more volunteers if she and her team win the Bake Off competition. But if they don't, they'll make sure to handle the field day alone. Jen is trying to find a recipe for the bake-off when the instructor warns her that using outside recipes is against the rules. Jen asks Kelly if she knows how to bake since she's always posting about baking on social media. Marissa jumps in and says that she knows the truth. Kelly always buys her baked goods from the store, then passes them off as her own. Kelly is mortified and embarrassed. She turns red and starts to stammer, trying to defend herself, but Jen and Marissa are having a hard time keeping a straight face. They start preparing their baking ingredients, adding a little of this and a dash of that, hoping to make the best cake possible. Jen even sends Isabel over to the other team's station to see what they're doing. Isabel reports back, saying the other team are laughing and dancing around. Jen tells Kelly that they shouldn't be copying Susan's team, they should just focus on doing their best. Everyone looks over as Jen takes a cake out of the oven only to see that it's still raw at the bottom. This draws even more attention to Jen and Kelly's station. They quickly remove another cake from the oven and cross their fingers, hoping it comes out better than the last. The instructor announces that they have 10 minutes left until the judging. Kelly realizes that they're the only ones who choose to make a cake. She notices that most people are avoiding the cake challenge because there isn't enough time for the cake to cool down before frosting. Jen tries to frost the cake, but the heat from the cake melts the frosting. Kelly looks at her phone and sees that people are making fun of their cake, and the situation seems hopeless. Dan asks if they're going to stay to hear the results, but Jen and Kelly say they have to go. 
They're about to walk out the door when someone rushes over with a napkin, covering up the mess. Jen, Marissa, and Kelly are on the street, trying to get more volunteers for field day, but no one is interested. Jen and Kelly head to the school to pick up the trophies for the winning team when they see a pop-up vodka bar. Kelly suggests they go and have a drink, but there's a long line of people. Kelly goes to talk to the bouncer and asks if they can skip the line. The bouncer tells her to get back in line. Jen texts Marissa and asks her to come and be a scary lawyer. As soon as the bouncer sees Marissa, he lets Jen, Marissa, and Kelly in. They're taken to a table and Kelly starts recording herself, trying to find the right take to post on her social media. She asks her friends for their opinion, and Marissa exasperates about them being all the same, so she should just pick one. Kelly says that the song playing is old and asks if anyone else agrees. Jen and Marissa both nod, and they head over to switch the song. They all start dancing to the beat, their hair bouncing, their bodies moving, and their hands up in the air. People begin taking photos and videos of them, and they feel a little self-conscious. They stop dancing and go back to their seats. Kelly worries that the photos and videos of them dancing will end up on social media, and she doesn't want people to see her looking silly. Jen tells her that she should be proud of who she is and not worry about what others think. She reminds Kelly that she has a daughter and husband who love her. Marissa adds that Jen will find that same love soon, and Jen's phone buzzes. It's a message from Dan, asking her out on a dinner date. Jen's heart skips a beat as she sees that. At Jen's house, she's unpacking with her mom. She tells her mom about Dan asking her out and how she's not sure if her late husband, Nate, would be proud of her for moving on. Her mom reassures her that Nate would want her to continue living her life and find happiness again. Jen feels a little better after hearing that. The next day, Jen is handing out flyers for field day to other parents at the school, when she realizes she can't find her black pants. She asks Kelly and Marissa if they have any, but they ask what the occasion is. Jen coyly smiles and walks away, leaving them in shock and wondering if Jen is going on a date. Marissa and Kelly are hanging out at Jen's house, helping her to pick out an outfit for her date. They try on all sorts of combinations, finally settling on a pretty shirt and black pants. Jen thanks her friends for their help and tells them that she's nervous and excited about the date. Marissa and Kelly wish her luck and tell her to have fun. As Jen walks out the door, she can't help but wonder what the night will bring. As Jen sits down at the table, Dan compliments her outfit and she blushes. They both laugh about how nervous they feel, but the ice is broken. The waiter comes over to take their order, and Jen orders soda water with lime. Dan orders a glass of red wine called Rainy Day Red. They talk for a while, getting to know each other better, then Dan's phone beeps. He reads a message from his sister, asking him to take his niece Piper for the day. He explains that Piper's parents are going through a divorce, and he takes her sometimes to get her mind off of it. He reveals to Jen that he was actually going to propose to his girlfriend before she ended the relationship. Jen consoles that must have been hard for him, and Dan says that nobody is truly happy in a marriage. Jen's expression changes, she cuts him off, saying that her parents are happily married, and that she was happy in her marriage. Dan apologizes and asks if she wants to talk about it. Jen agrees, wanting to be honest with him. When Dan asks how her husband passed away, Jen tells him that he had cancer. They talk about their lives and their losses, opening up to each other in a way they never thought they would. Suddenly, Jen realizes that they are focused more on their past lives, rather than the date. Jen and Dan drive home after their evening together, and Jen feels like it was the worst first date ever, not knowing what to say to end the evening. Jen gets home and sees her parents waiting for her. They try to act nonchalant, asking her how her date went. As Jen takes off her coat, she tells them about how she kept talking about her deceased husband and that she didn't think it was a very good date. Her parents reassure her that it's okay to talk about her past and what she's been through. They tell her that healing takes time and that she shouldn't feel bad about talking about her husband. Jen thanks them for their support and goes to her room. Jen's mom brings her a flash drive and tells her that Nate left it for her to watch if she ever felt like she was having a hard time after his passing. Jen puts the flash drive into her computer and watches the video. In the video, Nate tells her how happy he is now and that she shouldn't be sad for him. He tells her to live her life to the fullest because she's still alive. Jen is in tears by the end of the video. She soon texts Dan, asking if he wants to try a second first date. As Jen and Dan are talking, Susan walks by and gives Dan a dirty look. Jen asks what's going on, and Dan explains that Susan asked him out on a date last year, but he turned her down because he doesn't date the parents of kids at the school. He tells Jen that things are changing now that she's in the picture. Jen tells him that she needs to get back to helping her friends with field day, and they part ways. Marissa is panicking because they still don't have enough volunteers for field day, and it's only two days away. Jen reassures her that they can do it if they work together. Just then, Jordan comes to Kelly and tells her that some people are making fun of field day. Kelly looks over and sees Susan and her friends, so she walks over to them and tells them that they're supposed to be setting an example for their kids, not acting like they're still in middle school. Susan's friends are taken aback by Kelly's words, and Susan glares at her. Kelly storms off and rejoins her friends, who are praising her for putting Susan in her place. A few minutes later, a flood of parents start signing up to volunteer for field day. Jen, Marissa, and Kelly are ecstatic, and they hug each other in celebration. 
They're confident that they're going to make this the best field day ever. The day of field day finally arrives, and Jen, Marissa, and Kelly are overseeing the setup of all the games and activities. Everything is going according to plan, until they notice Marcus standing by his truck. Instead of helping to set up, they go over to him and ask why he's not helping. Marcus tells them that the weather forecast predicts rain later in the day and that he doesn't think it's safe to continue setting up. Kelly tries to persuade him to stay, but he's adamant about leaving. Jen and her friends watch in horror as the rain starts to fall. Just when they think things can't get any worse, the sprinkler system comes on, drenching everything. Kelly is determined not to let anything stop them from having a great field day, and she comes up with a plan. Jen and Marissa agree, but then they realize that it's going to be impossible to do without turning off the sprinklers first. They ask a groundskeeper to turn them off, but he says he doesn't have the key, so Jen decides to go ask Dan for the key to the sprinkler system. She approaches him, but their conversation quickly turns into an argument. Jen storms off, frustrated. Kelly catches up to Jen and asks if she got the key. Jen shakes her head and says that none of this would have happened if she had just skipped the PTO meeting where she was recruited for the field day planning committee. Jen suggests that they move field day indoors, and Kelly and Marissa agree. They spend the last few hours frantically getting everything set up inside. They hand out jobs to the volunteers and try to make sure everything runs smoothly. Kelly notices that Jen seems a little preoccupied, and asks her if everything is okay. Jen tells her that Dan is pulling away from her, and she thinks it's because he's afraid of the rumors about them. Kelly reassures Jen that they can handle anything people say, as long as they have each other. Jen is grateful for the support of her new friends and realizes that she's gotten closer to them than she ever thought possible. They hold each other for a moment before getting back to work. Just then, Susan walks in and sees the indoor field day set up. Kelly goes over to her and thanks her for everything, including turning on the sprinklers. Susan looks shocked and stammers, trying to defend herself. Kelly turns and walks away, leaving Susan to stew in her own bitterness. Meanwhile, Kelly's husband Kevin shows her that she's been trending online, with people praising her for being so down-to-earth and relatable. He tells her that sometimes being real is what makes an influencer successful. Kelly is overwhelmed by all the support and love she's getting from her followers and her husband. She realizes that this might be the start of something new and exciting. Jen, Kelly, and Marissa look around at the indoor field day and can't believe how well it's all come together. They know that they've accomplished something special, and they're proud of themselves. Tim, Marissa's husband, tells her that he's ready to take over and handle all the indoor field day duties, so she can go to work at the office. But Marissa refuses, saying that this is more important to her. Meanwhile, Jen sees Dan outside and goes to say hello. They talk about their relationship and how they're ready to start something new together. Suddenly, Dan slips and falls into the water tank, causing a big splash and making everyone laugh. As the field day event begins, Jen, Marissa, and Kelly watch the kids playing tug-of-war, basketball, baking cakes, and tire jumping. They come together to see how successful their planning has been. Kelly apologizes to Marissa for thinking she wasn't a good mom because she works so much. Marissa also apologizes for making fun of her social media activities. Jen smiles at both of them as Kelly says that even though she's happy about the success of Field Day, she's also excited to have them both in her life. All three smile and embrace each other. The sun is shining brightly as Marissa leads Jen and Kelly outside to take pictures. The three women are all smiles as they playfully don colorful hats, glasses, guitars, and ribbons for the photos. Suddenly, Jen spots Dan across the way and rushes to meet him. He tells her how much he enjoyed field day and how much it means to him, admitting that it was the day he realized how much he cared for her. They share a tender kiss, and Marissa and Kelly capture the sweet moment with their phones. Just then, Isabel comes running out to hug her mom. The entire group gathers for a group photo, laughing and smiling for the camera. They yell out the word, field day, as the camera snaps the picture. 